Hey everybody, this is Pete. And in this video, I want to demonstrate a technique for using reference geometry to help guide and control sheet metal features, specifically flanges at some angles that may be a little tricky to calculate and controlling the heights of legs of flanges, etc. So this is a part that was generously lent to me by a customer. And what they're doing is they're creating some sort of cover and then they're coping and flanging the ends like this. So the square ends work pretty well, but they're having some trouble getting this type of operation to work on this end. So give them a little bit of guidance and it seems to be working really well. So that's what I'm going to walk you through. So <clears throat> creating flanges at angles can be a little bit tricky sometimes and getting them to perform exactly the way that you want. So even if I simply flange this edge, 90 degrees would make sense, except when you look at it from this, you can see it's slightly sloped. So 90 degrees from that edge probably isn't going to give me exactly the results that I'm looking for, not like on the square side. So what we have to do sometimes is create reference geometry. And when we create a flange, most of the time we're using an angle, but we actually can use this by reference. So that's what we're gonna to cover today. So really quickly, I'm gonna go kinda of quick. I'm gonna create a three point plane. And I wanna do this intelligently where I kinda of know that this point, this point, and then on this side, actually, the inside corner is going to be the plane. And if we look at this from the top view, you can see that that plane is exactly in line with that edge. So that's the idea. We're able to create a work plane now that perfectly replicates the edge that we want. And now we can attempt to flange. But there's another thing that we're going to take on which is the height of this flange. So really quickly, if we were to flange these, you'll see that <clears throat> I can flange this one. And let's say I want it to be three quarters of an inch. I go this way. You see kind of the height that we've got going on there. Well, I'm gonna make sure that I have that exactly the angle that we want, which is by that reference. So now it's gonna fold to exactly that angle. Instead of 90 degrees, it might be slightly more or slightly less, but that will exactly line up there. And because we're gonna corner seam this later, I'm gonna change this to just the width of two inches. So we hit apply, and then we can do the same thing on this edge. Same general idea, we're gonna by reference here, same height, we'll do the edge. And <clears throat> again, we're using the same references that we had before, three quarters, and we go ahead and hit apply. So now we've got these completely in line and we'll corner seam them later. But when we get to this edge, right, and then we want to do the reference of the plane, three quarters doesn't really look the same. <laughs> so it, it's just the way that it's being measured because this is the long angle the three quarters is being measured from somewhere out here, the intersection of those two outer faces. So sometimes we have to add additional geometry. So I'm gonna create a parameter and we'll just call that, or I already had one, ah, there it was. So, so I saved some time. I created one called offset distance. Okay, go ahead and hit cancel there. And so we're gonna offset this plane. Right, and so technically, if I'm measuring from the outside, that should go this way, right? So we'll say negative, and I'll just type it in offset dist. Okay, so that is our plane from the outside. That would give us that three quarter inch height. And then we can't use a plane in this case, but I can do a work point. That's the intersection of this edge and the plane and that's a valid termination point for my flange leg. So we'll give it a go and see what we get when we flange this other guy. So flange it, again, picking the edge, picking our reference, which will be this plane, need to flip it. 
And then in this case, instead of that three quarters from this crazy intersection, this is where I can say two, and then go to this point. And you see now that creates a longer leg more along the lines of what we might be looking for. And we could have done this for all of them, right? So we could have done it for this plane and this one, but this one, especially because it's that long leg, is gonna give us kind of a funky result. So we hit okay, and there we have it. So I'm gonna hide this work geometry. We don't need it currently. And then we'll do the corner seams and then we'll be done. So I'll go ahead and corner seam this one corner seam it to this edge and there you see here's your 45 we want that to be a very particular distance we can handle that as well apply there we go and we can apply it to the other edge as well so there you have it so it's a little bit different technique because most of the time we use an, an angle measure like some degrees but you can use references to successfully create flanges at compound angles etc so I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and have a blessed day.